Yo, what's going on, guys? This is Patrick Foley, aka Patrick 4D. Um, as you know me on Instagram, and this is the first tutorial. Finally, putting this out there for you guys. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for like I don't know, like technically months because you guys have been asking me this forever. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate you guys getting me to 10K. That shows so much love. Uh, currently not even at 10K yet because I gotta make this video to drop it on 10K, but. Um, yeah, I never even would have thought that, like, a year a year ago today that, uh, you guys would, you know, mess with my stuff like this and, uh, would appreciate it like you do. It's kind of insane. But, um, yeah, let's get into this thing. Let's make it snappy. I'm going to show you guys what you want to know so you guys can start making some dope stuff. It's the least I could do for you guys since you guys have been, uh, really, uh, respecting the work for so long and everything. So, uh, yeah, we'll jump into Cinema 4D right now. Um, we're gonna go through a bunch of different stuff, and if you, it doesn't really matter if you're beginner, uh, intermediate, uh, expert, whatever you call it. Um, I'm not really sure where to start since it's my first tutorial. Um, I'm probably gonna just assume that you guys know like the basics, um, but I'm not gonna use any plugins, and I didn't like pre-download any textures or anything. Um, I'm literally just gonna go online for some stuff and literally show you the workflow how I usually do it. So uh, let's start from stage one. So, as you can see, the interface probably looks a little bit different from yours. A lot of people have been asking about this little panel here. Everyone thinks it's Octane. It's not Octane. It's uh, the physical renderer um, built into Cinema 4D right here. Yep, physical renderer. Um, and I'm going to go through a little bit of everything um, just to explain it for you. Um, so, the way to get this, first of all, this little uh, screen right here with the pre-render setup is you literally just go to Panel. Um, new panel and it sets you up with this panel right here and so whenever you create a camera or whatever um, you can assign it really easily just by uh, clicking on the camera um, and if you got this selected and you select this um, it applies to that panel so all I did was drag this panel over here um, so that way if I want to be working on some stuff that I got going on um, all I got to do is click the camera and let's say um, out of the camera here, I can still, you know, work around, do whatever I do. But when it renders, I don't have any lights right now, but when it renders, um, I can see all the changes I make and not have to go back to the camera and see where I was at. So that pretty much covers that. Um, you know, it was really useful for me to know that as well. But um, let's let's go out and start from stage one. Um First, what you're going to want to do is go to the output settings um, in the render settings, obviously. Um, I usually go 1080 by 1080 because that's the Instagram uh, raster size. Um, 72 resolution, I don't really mess around with that. It looks fine to me, um, but probably wouldn't be the ideal settings if I were going to blow them up uh, to something bigger. But for Instagram, totally perfect. And it keeps the file size small and the render time a little bit smaller. So, um, first you'll notice everything's set right here. It's pretty simple, nothing crazy. Um, you might have standard selected. So, go up here to the renderer, click physical. Um, it's been known to have the most accurate, especially when it comes to depth of field and stuff like that, um, settings. And it speeds it up a little bit. Um, it's a little bit faster than the um, standard renderer. Uh, so, next you're going to want to just uh, click ambient occlusion and global illumination, which will be in your settings right here. Um, and the only reason they're here is because I already have them checked off. And to make your render times faster, so you can look at the pre-render really quickly, what I usually do is go to samples, custom sample, t custom sample count right here, and then go to uh, this area here and make this 20, like a small number, because that'll really decrease your render time. It'll give you some splotches with the lightings and everything, um, but nothing that you really got to care about until you start exporting. So if you go back to the view. Um, which may be different. I think these have, they're not really tabs. All you got to do is just exit out of the render settings, obviously. Um, so once we're back here, um, if you go to filter, I, I turned off this grid because it's kind of annoying to me personally, but you can obviously keep that on, do what you got to do. Um, so let's go typical render. Let's just make something abstract, something I would make on the reg. And I literally didn't prepare for this, literally doing it as I come up with it. So you guys can see kind of how I think about this kind of stuff. Um, and what better way to start off than a sphere? Um, I actually changed the default sphere that pops up for me. Um, instead of standard, 
I go to Casa Ijon because, as you can see, the vertexes are uh, they're 100 percent um, spaced apart evenly, unlike standard. Where if you were using MoGraph, which we might use, I'm not sure, um, it'll be a lot more uh, symmetrical and fitting. So next thing I'll do is create a camera. So just click the camera right there. Um, and we're going to position it, tell this screen definitely to be inside the camera. So now this screen is in the camera. This is not, um, as you can see. Um, so we're going to hop into this one just for now, just so we can get it uh, set up. And I usually click the camera. I'm trying to see how I want to get this one fixed. I think what we'll do for this one is, you know, we'll move it manually. A lot of times what I'll do is go to the coordinates and zero these out, everything except the Z. Um, get these zeroed out as well. So now when I move the Z, I'm perfectly centered on this thing. But for this one, I'm literally just going to kind of go on this random. Right now it's a little confusing because I don't have a floor. So I'll make a floor, make a little plane, scale this thing way up. And uh, if I go here to the... What is this even called? It's called the, it's the different uh, you know the different views the top, uh, front, right. Uh, if I go to this panel right here, also by clicking the middle mouse button, um, you're able to do that. Uh, I will align this. Uh, let's see. I will align the plane that we have selected down so it is hitting the bottom of the sphere. So technically, the sphere will be on the floor. So once I get that centered off, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, I'm going to bump up my sphere segments to something a little better, like 200. Because we will be using um, displacement, I think, on this thing. Um, so we want that at least a decent amount bigger. Um, so it won't be all noisy once we get to the displacements. So now we got this set up. Um, let's set up like a good camera angle. I'm thinking something like this. Get that centered off on there. Also, by pressing O on the keyboard, it centers it to the object that you have selected. Um, so that looks good. Um, we got the floor going here. Looks nice. Um, and actually, we're going to want to expand this floor until we can barely, so we don't have to see any of the horizon. Um, here we go, something like that. So we got a nice little, if we hop out of the camera here, we can see where the camera's looking at really simple all we got is a sphere and a plane um, we're gonna hop back in that for now but uh, yeah let's start making this thing so let's go drag a uh, displacing uh, effector um, down to our objects manager and drag that first of all we can name this floor or we can name the plane floor all set put that down here if we want to just be organized um, and drag this displacer on the sphere um, and once you once you're on the displacer, um, you'll see that um, these things pop up right here, um, and you're make, pretty much making the displacer a child of the sphere. So now you know that it is activating the sphere, it is controlling the sphere. So we go to shading, um, go to shader, and let's add a noise. <clears throat> so you can see it looks all right, kind of looks funky um, from what I've seen other people. Um, the thing that kind of makes theirs not look insane is just not messing with this noise and by really messing with the different types of noises you can get a much better results obviously um, so here if you click this arrow here they have all these preset displacers which I guess we'll use for this tutorial they'll work fine um, I'm gonna go with stuple maybe and maybe increase the global scale to like 750 that looks okay it looks kinda cool definitely giving us a different vibe here uh, mess with the height a little bit. I always like to see how everything turns out. Let's see in the long run. It looks okay. Um, so right now it's at negative four about. Uh, if I go back to shading and edit this a little more, test out some other noises. It's okay. It looks organic. Looks like a meatball. Looks like an asteroid or something. It looks crazy. Some of these you need a ton of segments to bump out. Um, let's see, how does this one look like when it's not at a negative scale? Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention was, um, adjusting the high and low clips do a great deal of amount, 
Um, so basically, when you adjust the low clip, um, you erase. I'm trying to think how to describe this. You erase. You, it all has to do with the picture here, um, the noise channel. So um, when you push the blacks further out, um, you kind of erase the noise on certain parts of the sphere, as you can see. So it looks more like craters, um, and vice versa. When you hit the white channel, everything goes in. So you can see the middle of the sphere starting to pop out there. But I like kind of when you go like this. Um, and let's add maybe some more segments. Let's go to like 400. Oops, not 3. 400. Um, so that's looking much better. Um, as If you want to see this. Um, I usually like going to the display and going to garage shading lines or quick shading lines. Because it gives me an idea of what the segments I'm looking at uh, and why they're looking the way they look. Um, the next thing I want to do, let's see, for this one, let's go, let's actually take the scale up on this noise, maybe like a thousand, yeah, something like that looks cool. Take that down a notch, eh, little clip, that's cool. Um, let's take the displacer, go object, let's make it more... Let's go minus 8. Liking the way that looks. Make sure it's still touching the ground, which we are. It's looking, actually, technically it's not. Because um, we can see the outline there. So if we just move this up a little bit. There we go. Something. It doesn't even have to This one's sinking below the ground, but it's not going to matter because where our camera's placed currently. So we're going to hop back here. Um, and let's add like a little mesh going around this thing. So if we add another sphere. Um, we enlarge this a little bit. We want this to be centered and axis with the same sphere. And what I mean by that is if we go to this sphere right here, the one the displacer is going on, uh, go to the coordinates. <clears throat> um, we Let's go right-click this Y or any of the um, characters for that matter and select all of them. And you're going to want to right-click again, copy, and we're going to want to paste this to this sphere. So paste the coordinates. So as you can see, it is 100% on it, um, like that. And this is how you can create water, um, do all these types of things, um, because it's technically centered right on the sphere. So if we want to bump up those segments on this one to maybe 40, yeah, that looks about right. Something like that. Nothing too crazy. Um, and first thing we're going to do is get rid of... Um, the visibility of the sphere. So we don't want to go like this because otherwise, otherwise it's just going to be gone. Um, but we want to uh, double click that and double click this. Um, so now they're invisible but technically it's still there. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So if we grab a cylinder, just a uh, plain cylinder like this, um, we're going to go to the cloner, go MoGraph, cloner. So now we're bringing in some cloner action to this thing. Um, we're going to drag the cylinder as a child of the cloner. So as you can see, yeah, they're stacked on top of each other. Um, I'm going to take a sip of water real quick. And uh, that looks good. So we're going to click render instances, instances, which will be very helpful for when we start rendering. So there won't be a ton of uh, separate objects. They'll just be instances of one object. And uh, go to mode, object and drag the sphere that we just uh, made hidden into the object. So as you can see they're all a parent or they are all applied to each vertex as you can see here of the sphere and if you take the cylinder and click T and make these all smaller you can see that they're fitting to every single one of what would be the spheres uh, vertexes vertices but um, you're not seeing the sphere because we made it hidden and we didn't want to see that. So what you're going to do next is go from vertex to edge. And as you can see, now they're, they're on all of the edges, but we need to close the gaps. So scale on edge and drag this to 100%. So next thing you want to do is click the cylinder, make this radius maybe 1, and take the rotation segments to like 12 uh, you know what? Take the radius to 0.5. Yeah. 
That looks about right. So you can see we're getting kind of like an enclosure here. Like this thing has like a skeleton almost. Um, and that'll be cool in a second once we start messing with some more stuff. Um, and let's see, what, do we, what else do we want to do here? Um, could add rings or something. I think what we want to do is, uh, something I do a lot is add, you know, nice little reflective spheres on these things to make it look like almost like fungus or gross coming out of these things. Um, and we'll add that to the main sphere. So what we're going to do is obviously add a sphere so you can see it. Um, we'll, we'll call this thing, um, little bubbles. So we're going to add yet another cloner, MoGraph cloner, call it bubbles or whatever. Um, drag this on top of here, um, click uh, the cloner right here, bubbles, render instances, object mode, drag the original sphere on here, and you're going to go from vertex to surface. And that's going to randomize them all over the surface of it, and you don't want to stay on vertex too long because we have so many uh, segments if you want if you remember we have 400 so we don't want it creating 400 random spheres on this thing it'll slow slow down your computer so uh, the next thing we want to do is maybe take down these segments because they're gonna be pretty small it's like 12 um, and you'll see it looks kinda crazy here but if you scale these down it's not that bad um, they make these like 16 so, next thing you're going to do, you know, let's make a little bit more of them. Let's go 100. 100 fine. Now, of course, you can adjust the seed, randomize them however you want. Um, something that looks cool. Um, and while you have this cloner selected, Bubbles, you're going to go to MoGraph, Effector, um, Random. And what that's going to do, obviously, is going to randomize the position and everything of the cloners. But we don't care about randomizing the position. Um, we care about randomizing the scale because we don't want these to all be the same size. So if you drag this up or down a little bit to like 0.6 or negative 0.6, um, you can see it randomizes the scale of everything. So if you want to increase these now a little bit, you can really see how this thing's starting to look like a, a funky piece of like, I don't even know. So if you can randomize the seed till you like how it looks, um, that's totally fine. And this will get really cool once you start shading and texturing these things too. Um, so I'm going to mess with the scale of this floor until it's as big as I care about. Let's see this thing. Perfect. Because the smaller we have this thing, the better, obviously, with the segments. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, so now let's get down to, um, we will, we'll light this first, and if, um, I'm going in an order that's not favorable to you, um, I think this is better, so once we start to add reflections to things, you can see, um, how they actually looked, um, instead of doing it later. So, what we're gonna do now is add an HDRI map, um, and to do that, we're gonna add, uh, a little sphere here, yet again title it HDRI map and we can drag this way down so we don't confuse this with anything else and drag the scale of this thing way up until it covers uh, the camera and actually before I mess with that I'm going to turn this off this camera since it will have depth of field we're going to go to the object settings of the camera and take this from classic to portrait and as you can see, scaled way in. Um, we don't need to do. We don't need to be scaled this far in. So we can click anywhere and zoom out of this thing until we're happy. So right about here is fine. And that's why I felt like I had to scale this thing so much differently. Um, so let me hop out of this thing real quick and just. Um, I'm pretty much actually going to click the floor coordinate, get this all back to zero. And. Of course, I have to uh, move this plane down again so it actually hits the bottom of this uh, little object thing. And that looks just about good. 
Um, so we should be good there. I'm going to scale this down to something like that. And right now we should be good. Let me save this. Um, tutorial um, render should be fine. Um, so we're looking good there. We got something kind of like this. Pretty simple setup. It's literally just a ground and this little like abstract sphere thing, which looks pretty cool. Um, we haven't even gotten to lighting or texturing it. So we're going to make this HDR map appear again. Looks like this. We're going to drag it to be real big until we can't see it. Um, and that's perfect. We don't want to see it in the picture. So once we can see it through the camera, that'll be just fine. So if we step out, we can see that we're clearly made this globe around the whole thing. So we're going to hop back in. And uh, usually I got a bunch of HDR I saved, but for this sake, we're just going to go... Um, you know, search for a new one. So if we go HDRI 360 room or something like that, you'll get so many things that pop up. Go to images. I usually like going to search tools. The bigger the image, the better. Size larger than 2 uh, megabytes. And see, what I've learned is you want something with a lot of contrast. So you don't want something that's really flat like this. Otherwise, it's not going to give you some cool harsh shadows. It'll give you reflections, which will be nice. But um, I usually like things to look more, I don't know, cinematic, contrasty. Um, and you get that by picking images with um, variations in light value. So this might be good. Um, this could be good. Let's see here if we can find a really good one. Usually I can tell um, how they'll work out just by looking at them here. Um, let me try to find something really quick. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Nope, but not that. Maybe this. This could actually work. Let's try something like this, because the good thing about this one, it's got a little dude over here, but it's the good thing about this one is it has a really bright area and not so much going on, but it does have some cool uh, textures and things. So we'll take this one. We'll try it out, drag this to the down documents folder or whatever folder you want to put that in, um, and create our first material. And this will be the first time you'll actually see this thing in action. Um, so what you're going to want to do is click this right here, um, this panel, and click Option R. And what that should do is uh, add the pre-render for you. So right now it's rendering something, but you're not seeing anything because there's no light. Um, and... I'm pretty sure if it didn't pop up, you can just go here and add, let's see, interactive render region right there. So, take another drink. Should be good. And uh, we're going to apply this to the HDR map. Obviously, nothing happened yet except the HDR my, HDRI map sphere thing turned white. So, we're going to give this thing some light. So, if you double click that, um, you're going to get rid of the color channel, get rid of the reflectance channel, and click luminance. And for the first time, you actually see this thing alive um, with light. And it looks kind of shitty, one, because we don't have any materials on anything, and because light is coming from all directions, so it's got a really basic shadow coming from the bottom. But it does have some ambient occlusion because we still have the global illumination checked on and everything like that. First thing you want to do is go to illumination, Click GI Area Light, and that's going to get rid of any kind of weird artifacts slash splotchiness you're going to find on your floor or walls or anything. For the most part, that'll get the job done. Uh, but if you don't, you got to mess with the samples, which is in the uh, render settings, and I'll show you later. So next thing you want to go to Luminance, Texture, Load Image, Load the Image that we just loaded in. I think it's this one. Yep. And you're going to click No or yes, or whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. Um, and so it looks kind of funky, but we just got to mess with it. Um, if you want to go to mix mode, multiply, get this up to like 150, lightens it up a bit, maybe 125. Should be good. Um, and I think this is coming straight on, that's why it looks a little... Let's move this to a side angle that we can see better. Um, so if you hop out of this thing... oops. Let's go to this view, hop out of this thing. Um, we can make this 
x-ray if we go to basic click x-ray now we can see the object through it a little bit not that crazy if we go here since the camera's coming here we want this thing to come from maybe the right side and you'll see the change in lighting from here so see that much more contrast looks much better I'm even gonna move it even more farther this way yeah so we're getting light from pretty much one direction so now if we hop back in here um, you know we didn't even texture this thing and it's already looking pretty realistic um, first what I like to do is um, mess with the floor so I'm gonna make another material create new material or double click this area right here drag it on the floor now we got a white floor going on and I haven't figured out what kind of floor I'm going for yet but I'm pretty sure I want this thing to be reflective so I'm gonna go to reflectance um, add reflection legacy right now it's hundred percent reflective so we got that dude's head in there being reflected um, but if we add a little bit of roughness this is all it takes to really add like a pretty dope floor with reflection and an HDR map add 10 only looks so much better so now we're getting some realistic um, you know roughness on this thing looks like it's on like this rough mirror um, and if we take off actually let's go let's go click default specular and delete that we don't need that at all so if we go to layer one click that and you drag this thing down to like 18 now it'll show the white underneath it's so not it's like on this white surface um, and if we were to get rid of the color it'll be on a black uh, shiny surface so based on what I'm thinking, I'm thinking white for this one, and we can even take the white all the way up, give it that nice clean look, um, and this looks good for now. Um, we may add some bump later, but I don't, I honestly don't even care. Um, it looks nice for me. The floors, I don't really worry too much about. Now let's get to uh, texturing this thing. So what we want to do next is create yet another material. Um, and let's let's do the uh, the outer shell first, so we can just drag it right here. That'll be applied to the sphere. Um, so now it's like this white sphere thing. Trying to figure out what um, color I want to uh, do this thing. I'm thinking maybe. Let's see. Let's put let's put like a pattern on this thing. Maybe like a marble pattern. Um, so if, if you go to color, Cinema 40 has got some really cool, um, stock patterns. So if you go to texture, surfaces, marble, um, pretty decent marble pattern. Looks cool. Um, and that's really, I don't even think we have to scale wise. It looks decent. Um, usually I mess with this and make these all two, the value of two, because usually it comes out too big, but I think with this scale, it looks good. Um, I think I'm trying to think if we need to mess with let's add some shine to this thing go to reflectance add reflection and again take away the default specular get rid of that thing um, and put this at 16% so now we got this shiny um, marble texture going on here looks pretty nice um, I think marbles are usually pretty clean, so I don't think we have to mess with too much roughness. Maybe one or two. Um, that looks fine. Um, let's make it a little bit shiny. Let's go 20. Let's mess with the colors. Let's go maybe... Let's add one more layer to this gradient. Let's see what happens when we make it like pinkish or something. So that changed the whole thing of this. Um, looks pretty decent, actually. Um, I'm not mad at it. Uh, if we drag this over here and make the white a little bit more prominent, I think that would help out a little bit. Okay, that's not that's not terrible. Um, yeah, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. Uh, so let's take this black out, see what that does, I think that's fine, yeah, it didn't really do anything anyway, so we're good on that for now, let's add a little bit of a bump, go to texture, noise, and let's go to maybe this bump right here, booyah, 
and bring this down to like 10%. Should be good. Is that too much for this marble? Yeah, I think it's a little too much. So let's go to 5%. Yeah, that should be good. Um, and then again, make the reflectance. Let's take the reflectance to the first layer to like 26%. Just add a little bit more reflection on there. Um, that looks fine to me. Yeah, if you go back to the color, let's, let's boost this saturation up a little bit on the pink. Cool. Let's take the bump down. See, it's all messing with these values to make it more realistic. A lot of people kill the realism and everything when bumping this shit way up, making the bump this heavy. Um, it's easy to you know go a little overboard with this stuff. I mean, that it looks kind of cool. It depends where you're going for it. Maybe someone would want that. Um, but uh, Command Z in this shit. Um, this looks a little better for now for this purpose. Um, next thing we're going to work on is the, and a lot of times for this, if this stuff gets a little too crazy, I take, go to options, take off texture so I can see um, what I want to work on next. So I'll work on these, uh, these little trimmings here. I don't know what color I want to go with them yet, but, um, I'm going to drag them on the cylinder obviously. And we're going to mess with those next. And that's why I like having this render region here because it, it applies 100% and I can still see what's going on here. I can still see what's going on here. Um, so let's make, I'm thinking let's make these things gold. So we're going to take the color all the way out. We don't need color. Reflectance, kill the default specular. Add a reflection. Don't even think we need, let's add like maybe 2% roughness. Um, and right here in the color with the layer color, we're going to go just a tiny bit of yellow because even a little bit makes it look fake. So even just like that. Um, so now you got a decent gold texture. If I unclick here, you can see. So that's a decent gold texture right there. Um, it may even be too gold because you see we didn't even add that much and it already looks like a really decent amount of gold. Um, trying to think, maybe a little bit towards the orange side. There we go. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm not mad at that. Um, yeah, I don't think that's bad. We're good with that. Um, so let's go to the next texture, which is, of course, the little bubble things. Um, let's mess with these. I don't know. I might have been thinking just straight shiny black. So if you take the color out of the, um, black balls, add a reflection, and you don't even have to mess with, I would just take the global global reflection brightness down to 15%. So now all these things on here. So now all these things are like relatively textured a little bit. And you can see the realism is going, uh, it's getting much better. Um, we have this lighting coming from, you know, pretty much one side, which looks great. You can see the reflections of the HDR map in both the floor and the objects. Um, and I'm going to add a little bump just for realism once this thing looks, uh, once we bump this thing out, you'll be able to see it a little more. Um, let's go to Poxo or whatever that's called. Take the bump down to like 5%. And the next thing we got to worry about is the depth of field. So for this thing, we'll probably move in a little bit. Let's zoom in just a little bit. And center it a little bit like this. And what we want to do is um, you, we got to go back to the render settings, go to physical, and enable depth of field. That will allow us to start messing with the depth of field, obviously. So once you got the camera selected, you're in the camera. Um, because we're set to the portrait 80 millimeter, I don't know, you got to know about cameras a little bit to be familiar with depth of field here. Um, that's where my background in photography and videography helps a little bit. But um, because you're set at 80 millimeters, that'll be perfect for the depth of field. So if you don't know, um, having a wide angle, it's harder. It's like more things will be in focus. So that's why when you shoot a wide angle for a landscape shot, everything's in focus. Um, but if you shoot like this thing with like a 50 millimeter or um, an 80 millimeter um, from which we got now, uh, 
it's easy for things to become out of focus real quickly. So the way to choose the way to change that is one, we got to set our focus distance. We got to say what do we want in focus. So if you click out of the camera, you'll see that this camera, the green lines of the camera coming from the camera, you see it stops at this thing, and that's the focus distance. And obviously, it's focused way too far past the object. So you can do that manually by bringing this in. Um, see as it changes the focal distance when I move this or you can do which is much easier to me you literally click this thing and click where you want it to focus so let's let's say something like right here let's click that little pimple right there so once you jump out of it it's all set to right there next thing we gotta adjust is the aperture so the f-stop and pretty much the higher this number I'm not gonna explain 100% of it but the higher this number, the more things in focus. The lower this number, the less things. So it's at 8 right now, which is pretty high. Um, the good thing about Cinema 4D is you can go to a number that isn't even physically realistic or possible. Um, so I could go to point, literally point 0.1, and everything is going to be out of focus except that one tip that I want to be in focus. So if you see as it starts rendering, everything is super out of focus except this one little thing that I wanted in focus right here, which actually looks cool. Um... But I'm probably going to go more with like 0.5 um, because it still gives you kind of like that depth of field look. Things in the back are not really in focus. Maybe 0.4 for this one. Um, but the lower you go, um, usually in real life, 1.4 is like a really, um, really high aperture, um, really low f-stop. Um, but this 0.4 is just a crazy amount. So these things, um, not even like a centimeter behind, are not in focus. So it looks it looks really cool. It gives it a really cinematic look. And uh, I think we're almost done. Let me look at the checklist for what I covered. Holistic shadowing, HDR maps, reflections, render settings, camera depth of field, and materials, mobile graph, displacer, interface. So I think that's good for this tutorial. Um... What I'm going to do now is we got that set up. We got this covered. So I think we're good until we go to Photoshop. It's only half done. Um, so I'm going to um, option R, um, quit the pre-render, and I'm going to make sure everything's good to bump out. What I'm going to do here is go to Global Illumination, bump this sample count back to like 100 or 150. Um, we should be more than good with like 125. And um, I'm going to go here and literally just put this thing to, like, adaptive. It'll be fine. With these settings, you can look at all these, and they'll be coming out just fine. Um, and again, um, yours may look different based on the HDR image you used. If it's not coming out right, there's a chance you didn't pick um, a great image or it's not bright enough. So you can go to um, the luminance, go to multiply, and brighten it up even more. I don't know why 100%. Sometimes it's not the brightest. You got to bump that shit up way more. Don't think you're going overboard. If it doesn't look bright enough, you're not bright enough. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much good. Um, I'm going to render this out how we have it here. Really simple. We don't have like hundreds of layers or anything. Um, but it shows you not everything I make is like this crazy amount of layers. I use X particles a lot. Um, we didn't use any uh, plugins for this. Um, a lot of times when I render, I don't use plugins. But, um,. I think we're good. we're going to start rendering this out. Um, I don't think I forgot anything. I didn't want to go over literally everything. There are a lot of things I didn't go over that you guys mentioned you want to know. Because one, I want to save some for more tutorials coming up if you guys liked how this went. And two, um, I didn't want to squeeze everything in when it didn't make sense. So, um, as you can see, this is rendering like really fast. We didn't do anything. We, we were mindful of our samples. Um, nothing was that crazy. And, um, I just want to say, I appreciate you guys for, um, tagging along, following me for this long, following the journey, seeing me grow as a motion media artist. This isn't even my main occupation. I really run a production company called Hugh Productions. Um, but it's been a long journey. Uh, I appreciate everyone who's followed so far. Um, please subscribe to the YouTube. If you're watching this video, you obviously, um, are on the YouTube um, but I really appreciate all you guys, um, spread the word 
and uh, maybe soon I'll have like an art exhibit or something like that. Have all you guys come out to Atlanta, Georgia, or Chicago, Illinois. I'm not really sure. Uh, but let me know in the comments if you think this was a good video, if you like how I approached this, liked how I spoke about it, any improvements you have, uh, drop me a DM, whatever. I'd be happy to reach out to you guys, and uh, I appreciate it. I'll show you, uh, I will make a, another tutorial really soon and drop it of the post-production in Photoshop of how I actually make this look like a uh, um, photo. Adding noise, coloring it, because this is really flat right now. I'm going to bump this out as a TIFF. Um, so I would not post anything like this to uh, my Instagram. So it still has to go through a huge phase of uh, post-production in Photoshop before I even release this. So just let me know, and uh, I'll drop this next video ASAP. So I appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.